What's up, gang? Welcome to The Greatness Machine. I'm your host, Darius from Shaz Day. I'm so pumped to have you here with me. Now, listen, The Greatness Machine, we're about two things. Number one, people who live in their passions. And number two, those who are creating greatness in the world and doing both of these things despite the odds against them. Each episode, we're going to feature interviews with game changers, business leaders, you know, telling us their origin stories, what made them tick, what got them to where they are now. Why? So it can help you step into your greatness within your life, your business, and your career. Occasionally, you might hear a few solo episodes from myself, moi, as I say, as I leverage my 20 years of entrepreneurship as a CEO and founder to help you grow and level up in your journey to scale your life and your business. So come be a fly on the wall, enjoy the conversation, and I'm stoked to have you here with me. What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of The Greatness Machine. I'm your host, Darius from Shaw's Day, and I'm flying solo. Today is my 46th birthday. So you're going to hear this actually <clears throat> the day after my 46th birthday, but today is my 46th birthday. And so 46 turns around the sun, feeling great. And um, I always like on my birthday to kind of talk about the things that really stood out to me in my 45th turn around the sun. So last year, like, what are the top things I learned? And so uh, today's episode is really focused on that. And I, I wanted to, first of all, thank all the listeners for supporting the show over the last couple years I started the show almost four years ago and it's uh it's been an awesome ride that's one of my great joys in life is doing the show so you know i really wanted to think like what's like the top one or two things that really changed for me this year and and there's really to, like, i would say two really profound takeaways and learnings i've I've had a a four-year introspection from five year actually now i guess from 41 to 46 so the past five years has been a real big personal journey for me um and really introspective around like like what do i want my life to be like and i really spent the first the majority of the first part of you know my life um trying to prove worth trying to prove that i m- mattered and um and this year has been a really important year because i started a new business uh, i was really uh, i was kind of putting my a lot of the work i had been doing on myself, it was a little bit of an, in a vacuum. It wasn't, I, I hadn't put it under stress. You know, I hadn't, I wasn't stressing myself that much. Uh, the, uh, I, there would be moments when the stress would come out, but what I, I, I used to have a saying, I was like, if you want to, you know, if you want to test a system, put it under stress. You know, I want to fill the bucket up and see if there's any holes in the bucket. And so this was a really interesting year because it was a year where I filled the, the bucket up with water and, and really started putting stress on the system. I really pushed um, myself personally in a lot of ways. Um, some, I didn't ask for it. It just showed up and some um, was by choice, but you know, all, all by choice, I, I guess I would say is because I, I showed up and, and asked for, um, I really asked for the, the, the opportunity to, build something new. And, and what I'm talking about right now is building the new business. And it showed up in a lot of ways, a lot of stress, uh, you know, with folks that were new partnerships, a new business. Um, I'm still in it right now, even as I speak. And so that really started testing a lot of the inner work that I had been doing. And two real, two big things popped up for me. Um, I had a relapse around uh, my anxiety. And so this is probably the first time I'm, I'm admitting this publicly, but yeah, I've, I've had, a, you know, I've really struggled with anxiety up until a couple of years ago um, and up until two years ago, really. And, and a little bit less than two years ago, I kind of flipped the switch and, and, you know, stopped the anxiety really stopped controlling me. And I had a much stronger awareness around you know, what was making me anxious. And this past year was a big challenge around that because there was a lot of opportunities for there to be, um, stress and anxiety. And, um, and yeah, it was interesting because I really saw the parts of me that I would say if, if I was to, you know, honor those parts of me, the, the inner child, the, the, the part of me that wants to be seen and heard and feel valued came up screaming loud. And it was really interesting because what I learned from that was that, uh, that part of me will always be a part of me. So it's not like we, you know, life is this journey where sometimes we, we were like, oh, I, the, I, I overcame that. And what I realized is that overcoming um, things that we perceive to be weaknesses or, or challenges of our inner self is an ongoing process. And it's something where, it, you know, I, I had a bit of a relapse that came back and I saw it and I faced it eye to eye, but I did it with a new set of tools because I had spent 
you know, the greater part of the last two years, really four or five years working on um, what makes me the best version of me. And yeah, I was able to lean on this, these skills I built over the last, you know, four or five years around, you know, who am I? And what I realized was, and the biggest takeaway was this awareness, having that awareness, you know, building the muscle of awareness. And, and so the different version, again, like if I flash back to five years ago, I was in a very stressful situation uh, exiting my company and I hadn't yet built the muscle of awareness. And I've done it through meditation. I've done it through just a lot of inner work, um, working with a lot of different people, mostly just though working on myself, read a lot of books and, and really developed. I'd built the muscle of awareness. And so as, as Rand Stegen says, you know, with awareness comes choice and, and responsibility. And so this time around, it was interesting because I saw this, these old parts come out, but I had, a, I had that space around a re, awareness and reaction had been built. That muscle was built now. And there was strength there. And I was able to lean on it in ways I hadn't before. And what I would say is my biggest takeaway for the year is like, what can we do to build that muscle of awareness to make it stronger and stronger? Because with awareness comes choice and then responsibility and that reaction, the, the difference, the space between noticing and reacting became so much stronger. Or even when I would react, it was to then pull it back and say, whoa, okay, where's this coming from? And, and so that was really the number one thing that, that really came up for me because it came up over and over and over again over the year. And I would find myself wanting to react, but then realizing, whoa, why am I, why am I feeling this way? It was a question I would ask. And then I would, and then I would say, well, what do I really want? And, and, and am I, is this my ego talking? Is this my trying to, you know, force an outcome talking? Is this my inner, you know, child wanting to be seen talking? Or is this just, you know, a moment in time? And so it's been really, it, it felt I've, there was almost relief in knowing that I have that now in my back pocket. I have that tool. The other thing, the, the number two thing that came up in this game, this was like, I had this like crescendo moment last week on my forum in town and we did some inner work together. And, um, you know, I came up with a saying, which is uh, no PP. So for, so for people that are familiar with the song OPP, old song by Naughty by Nature, I said, you're down with no PP. For, and for me, I had this massive realization that I had built up a skill set that served me really, really well for the, a big part of the beginning part of my life and maybe up until fairly recently around people pleasing. And I would leverage it as a tool to help get me what I want. Uh, as a younger person, as a child, it was around, you know, creating you know, stillness and calmness in my family, uh, making people feel good. Uh, as a teenager and young adult, it was around winning people over and getting people to like me. Uh, as a young adult and a young professional, it was around, you know, getting people to want to be a part of what I was doing and making them feel safe and secure and enjoying my, my leadership. And what I realized, though, as of the last few years is that it's become a bit of a liability, the people pleasing. And what I mean by that is I would do it at my own detriment. I would do it at the expense of really having the, having the experience that I wanted when I wanted it. And, and I was perpetuating an eventual outcome. And the reason I always felt comfortable around pe my people pleasing was because I knew that in my back pocket was this version of me that wasn't a people pleaser. And, and I'm going to spare you the name of it, but I'll just say it starts with an F. <laughs> and it's a very derogatory word. F something Darius. <laughs> F you Darius is what my brother calls it. And I always had that in my back pocket. I've had it for forever. Like, so I was always like, oh, I'm, I'm kind of fine with people pleasing, winning them over. I'll take a little bit of a hit on the chin, knowing that if people cross the line with me, F you Darius shows up. And body slams that person and and that's worked it's been a very effective thing because i always felt like ah, it's fine let them have a little bit more than maybe i think they deserve but at the end of the day if everyone's happy then we move on and you know it's a win-win and i'm willing to give up a little bit on my side whether that's you know in the business financially or whether that's interpersonally or that we're getting exactly what i want or going where i want like it was all these things where i was like well i'm paying into the till i'm depositing into the relationship um you know account and 
I've been doing that my whole life. And I just hit a point this year where I was like, you know, no pee pee, <laughs> no people pleasing. Um, I'd rather cut it off of the pass. I'd rather not do that because I think it establishes an unhealthy uh, relationship standard for me and those I care about. And what I'd rather do is not do the people pleasing. And what I'd rather do is show up with truth and authenticity, even if there's, even if it creates conflict. And I, what I, my realization was, is that that's power is being willing to have conflict earlier than maybe is comfortable for the sake of the betterment of the whole. Because if eventually I'm not going to, you know, I'm either going to give up and feel a little bit resentful or I'm going to, which that's not healthy for the relationship or I'm not going to give up. I'm going to body slam and, and feel powerful. Then am I really serving the betterment of the relationship as a whole? And the answer that I came to was, no, I'm not. I'm actually not serving the betterment of the relationship as a whole. What I'm serving is my ego. And I'm trying to create this like safe environment that's, that has a, a mismatch of fairness. And so my mantra for 2024, the rest of it, and for my 46th year on the planet is no PP, you know, no people pleasing. Now, it's not, not to say that I'm not going to like, you know, it's inherent for me. Like I'm a person, my number three strength and strength finders, woo, it's winning others over. I'm, I'm going to go there naturally, but with an awareness now around where is it coming from? Is it coming because I truly want to do that? It's a, that that's where I'm wanting to go? Or is it because I'm trying to plead someone else or make them feel good at my own expense? And so um, those are the two big things for me that happened this year. This, this really, this, this no people pleasing and, you know, testing myself, testing, putting, you know, with the having learning and testing and playing with the tool of awareness and space between, you know, having awareness and reactivity. And they all kind of go hand in hand because at the end of the day, this is around living our best lives and, and being empowered to bring our best selves into the world. And, and I feel like that this year has been a, a real uh, sharpening of the spear because it's one thing to talk about, you know, not being anxious or not being attached. It's another thing to be tested around those things with real things that matter a lot and seeing how you, what happens when you're on the mat, you know, as the thing of shock and, former guest on the show talks about what, what happens when, you know, it's easy to talk about what a fight looks like. It's another thing to, to go fight, <laughs> you know, go fight that fight and be under duress and to see how you react and realize, Oh no, I have some skills I didn't have before. And yeah, it, it doesn't feel good necessarily, but I know how to navigate those um, situations. So I'm um, going to be taking that for with me into the 46 year, uh, really like flexing that awareness muscle flexing that non-reactivity muscle and flexing the muscle of not people pleasing just to make others feel good at my own expense. And I hope you do the same with yourself. Uh, again, thank you guys so much. The best birthday, birthday present I ever have is, is people listening to the show or sharing the show. So please do that. And um, until next time, peace out. Love you. are listening to the greatness machine and that's a wrap for today listen if you love what you heard subscribe to the show on whatever podcast platform that you're tuning in on so that you don't miss any of our future episodes we have tons of great people coming on and we're, we're stoked to have you here to enjoy it with us leave us a review tell us what you love most about this particular episode we love getting the reviews we love to see what you guys love most and if this particular episode you know made you think of someone who's leveling up in their business and in their life print screen share it with them leaders are the best givers and after all we're all here to support and grow with each other and in case you want to see some of the fun behind the scenes shots or some of the things that we're doing i'm actually writing about this in my weekly newsletter go to www.therealdarius.com and subscribe to my newsletter we're talking about fun things like business and life and mindfulness and cryptocurrencies and gosh i don't even know everything and anything but it's tons of fun stuff i write about i try to get it out on a weekly basis you can subscribe at www.therealdarius.com and with that said look thank you guys so much i appreciate you i love you peace we're out of here see you guys on the next one uh -huh. she's my lover